So in this video, we're going to work out the problems from the worksheet for section 4.6, roots, radicals, and perfect squares. And number one asks us to explain why the radical to the power of 2, and when you take a, an exponent to the second power, in this case an x to the second power, you end up with just the base. So why, when you combine a radical to the second power and an exponent to the second power, they go away? I kind of answered number one right there, but I'll rewrite it. The reason this happens is because radicals and exponents of the same power cancel each other out. So in this case, the exponent of 2 and the radical of 2 simply canceled each other out, leaving us with just the base with no exponent or an exponent of 1. And that's number one. Any questions? Let's take a look at number two. Two says explain why when you take an exponent to the second power under a radical to the third power, it does not equal out to just the base. And this is in many ways the opposite of number one. The number one you had a matching power. Here, you don't have a matching power. So you can't cancel out the radical and the exponent. So the explanation is since the radical and the exponent do not have the same power they will not cancel each other out. Oops. Let's cancel each other out. So that's the explanation for number two. Again, if they have the same power, they cancel. If they don't have the same power, they're not matching. They're not opposites. They don't cancel each other out. It's kind of like saying negative 3 plus 2 is 0. No, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, but negative 3 plus 2 is not 0 because they don't cancel each other out. They're not opposites. Questions on 2? All right, number 3 has us working this problem out, and you're asked to find the exponential forms for all of these perfect squares. So these are all perfect squares. I have 10 of them listed here. They're not the only perfect squares in existence. There are a lot, but we're limiting ourselves to just the 10. So to find the exponential form of the perfect square, you have to think about what two identical integers, when multiplied against each other, will give you that perfect square. For one, it's easy. Uh, really, nothing else gets 1 except multiplying 1 against 1. So 1 times 1, and po that's positive. So positive 1 times 1, I can write that as 1 squared, because that's 1 times 1. But I can also take a negative 1 and multiply it against a negative 1, and that still is 1. So I can write negative 1 squared. Then, for 4, what two identical integers when multiplied together give you 4? 2 times 2, or 2 squared. And again, the negative versions of those integers, their opposites work as well. Negative 2 times negative 2 is still a positive 4. So negative 2 squared is also an exponential form of 4. Then for 9, 3 squared works out well. 3 times 3 is 9, as is its opposite. Negative 3 times negative 3 is also 9. 
416, 4 is a good choice. 4 times 4, again, has to be two identical integers. You can get 16 by multiplying 2 and 8, but they're not identical. I'm looking for two identical integers. So 4 times 4, or 4 squared. And once again, negative 4 squared works out fine. Because negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16. For 25, 5 times 5 is the ticket. That gives us 25. And once again, the opposite works out Oops. as well. For 36, 6 times 6, which is 6 squared. And also, of course, it's negative opposite. Negative 6 squared. For 49, 7 times 7 is perfect. And it's negative opposite works out as well. For 64, 8 times 8, or 8 squared. And of course, it's negative opposite works out as well. For 81, 9 times 9 gets us 81. And of course, it's negative opposite works out as well. And 400, it's 10 times 10. And of course, the negative opposite works out as well. So here we have 10 perfect squares and their dual exponential forms. Either one will work. So these perfect squares can technically be achieved using either the negative exponential form or the positive exponential form. Neither one is incorrect. Questions on number three? For number four, you're asked to explain why every square root answer has both a positive and a negative solution. And we kind of looked at that when we did problem number three. But uh, square roots are kind of interesting in that way because you're multiplying two things against each other, two identical numbers in this case, but you are multiplying two things. And in multiplication, when you multiply two negative numbers, the outcome is positive. So there are two ways to achieve the exponential form of a perfect square by multiplying two of its positive uh, numbers or two of the negative ones. For example, to get 121, which is one way I'm really mentioned, to get its exponential forms, I can either multiply 11 times 11 which is 11 squared, or I can multiply 11 times negative 11, which is of course negative 11 squared. So because of the way perfect squares work, and you're multiplying two numbers together to achieve their exponential forms, there are two ways to get that the positive and the negative. And to the explanation, you can say, because two negatives when multiplied, comma, when multiplied, yield a positive. they can be a solution to a positive perfect square. So once again, because when you multiply two negative numbers, they, the product is positive, they can be a solution 
to a positive perfect square. And that's why you always have two solutions, the positive one and then a negative one because when you multiply two negatives, the answer is positive. There was a bit of a lengthy explanation. I actually ran out of room, so I had to borrow a little bit there. But anyways, any questions on number four? Now let's take a look at number five. Number five asks us to define the principal square root. So the principal square root, very easy. It is the positive square root. So the principal square root is the same as the positive square root. And what they mean by this is that if you had the perfect square of 4, you could technically have two possible answers. Can someone tell me what are the two possible answers? Or the two possible exponential forms? 2 squared, 2 times 2, and negative 2 squared, negative 2 times negative 2. The principal square root is that one. So when they mean the principal square root, the main one, they always talk about the positive one. Not that the negative is any less correct, but in math, by default, we choose the positive if we have to choose one. So that's number five. Any questions? All right. Number six, you're asked to circle the numbers that are square roots. So you're looking for anything that can potentially have exponential forms. So numbers, essentially, I'm telling you to find me these. So you can recognize them in a problem. So 15, no way. There's no two numbers, no two integers that can give us 15 when multiplied together. 36, yep. Yeah. 6 times 6 or negative 6 times 6, that works. 48, nope. No two numbers can, when multiplied, that are integers can give us 48. 16 works. 4 times 4 or negative 4 times 4. 26, nope. That's 2 times 13. Yeah, that's not going to work. But 49, 7 times 7, or negative 7 times 7, that works. 80, mm -mm. 70, mm -mm. nope. 4, oh yeah. 2 times 2, or negative 2 times negative 2. 5, mm -mm. nope. 81, sure. 9 times 9, or negative 9 times 9. 100 works too. 10 times 10, or negative 10 times negative 10. 2, and that's a 2, not a z, does not work. There's no two numbers that you can multiply that are the same to get 2. You can do 1 times 2 or 2 times 1, but they're not the same. 9 works. 3 times 3 or negative 3 times 3. 6, nope. This one we haven't really shown you, but this one works. 121 can be written as 11 times 11 or negative 11 times negative 11. So that was, I guess, the tricky one, one that I haven't shown you. All right, questions on six? Seven. Seven, you're asked to simplify, and these are super simple. So can someone tell me what are the answers to all three? If you said M, three, and Y, you're absolutely correct. Here, the exponent of two and the radical of two cancel each other out. So you're left with just the M. Here, the radical of, of power of 2 and the exponent of 2 cancel each other out. You're left with 3. Here, I didn't write that radical to the power of 2. But if you remember, I mentioned this. If there is nothing there, in radicals, you assume it's automatically second power. In exponents, you if there was nothing there, you assume it was exponent of 1. But in radicals, if they don't write it, you assume it's power of 2. Which means it, again, cancels out with the exponent of 2 to get us just the y. Questions on 7? That was quick. All right, looking at 8 on this upper left corner, you're supposed to find the square root. 
Can someone tell me what's the square root of 25? It's 5, or it's negative 5. Now, you're only asked to find the principal square root automatically, unless I specify. It's only the positive, but do keep in mind that you do have both. So the way you do this is as such. You first write the radical. And you can write the 2 here, or you don't have to write the 2. Again, the book doesn't. I like to write it. Then, how can I write 25 in its exponential form? Two ways, 5 times 5 or negative 5 times 5. And I'm going to go with my principal root, so the positive one. And here the 2 cancel out. And I'm left with, with just 5. And that's that. Same thing here. Again, I write the, the radical symbol. This time I'm not going to put the 2, but you know it's there. How can I write 49 in its principal exponential form? Seven times seven. Yes, negative seven times negative seven will work too, but I'm going for my principal square root. So now we have a cancellation of a radical to the power of two because that's power of two and the exponent of two. And I'm left with, with just a seven. 64, same as the first two. I'm gonna write the two this time again, just so you can see that it doesn't really make a difference. And what is the positive exponential form of 64? If you said 8 times 8, you're absolutely correct. Or 8 squared. And then I'm going to go ahead and cancel out. And hey, I didn't write the 2 here. It doesn't really matter. And those are my answers for number 8. Questions? All right, number nine in the upper right corner, you're once again asked to simplify. These are a bit more involved, mostly because I like to separate them into their numerical and, exp and variable forms, so break them apart, and this is how I do it. I separate them like this. 16 goes alone. And the n squared goes alone as well. Now, well, how can I write 16 in its positive exponential form? If you said 4 squared, you're absolutely correct. And what would be my last step? If you said cancel the radical to the power of 2 and the exponent to the power of 2, you're correct. And I'm left with, with just 4 times n or 4n. Can someone tell me what should I do with the second part of 9? If you said break up the number and the variable into their own radicals, I'd agree with you. I'm not going to write the 2 this time around. Again, it's there. It's just not showing, or I'm not showing it, but you assume it's there. Can someone tell me how I can write 81 in its positive exponential form? If you said 9 times 9, or 9 squared, you're correct. And my last step, can someone tell me? Cancel out the radical to the power of 2 and the exponent to the power of 2. Same power, I can cancel them. But again, remember there is that 2 here that we simply don't write. And 9 times w is my answer, or just 9w. Questions on number 9? Let's look at number 10, our second to last problem on the bottom left corner. Just like number 9, except I'm going to break it up into three different things. So what are the three different things I'm going to break it up into? The 
the radical of 9, or the second power radical of 9, the second power radical of x squared, and the second power radical of m squared. Again, I haven't really done anything except rewrote the problem. And can someone tell me what is the positive exponential form of 9? If you said 3 squared, you're correct. And I'm going to rewrite the other 2. And I can see why people don't like to write this 2 here. It's kind of annoying. And it becomes cumbersome to write. So I can see why mathematicians are lazy. They're, ra they're lazy for a good reason. I'm going to cancel now my powers of 2 and my radicals of 2, which is going to give me 3 times x times m or 3xm. Now let's look at the second part. Again, I'm going to break it up into three different things just like I did before. And here I'm not going to write the power of 2, but I assume or hope that you are okay with it now. So the b squared and the g squared. So I broke this up into three different parts. I can do that. Can someone tell me what is the positive exponential form of 100? If you said 10 squared, you're absolutely correct. And then I'm going to rewrite the other two. And then what do I do next? If you said cancel out the radicals to the second power and the exponents to the second power, you're absolutely correct. And that, of course, gets me 10 times b times g, or 10bg. Any questions on number 10? Number 11 is uh, one of my patented find and fix, well, not really patented, find and fix problem types, where you're supposed to see where I made my intentional mistake, not one of my usuals, and then tell me what it was and what should I have done instead. So can someone tell me what that particular mistake was and what should have been the correct way to go? All right. So let's take a look here. Let's go step by step and see what should I have not done. I have this big problem here, four parts. No big deal. I break it up into four parts. And yes, I lost the two from here to the breakups, but that doesn't really matter. If I don't write the two, that still means it's a radical to the second power, so that's not the mistake. 81, 8 squared, m squared, w squared. All good so far. And then, magically, I write 8 squared. 8 squared is not 81. 8 squared is 8 times 8, which is 64. I should have written down here a 9 squared. So right here. That should have been a 9 squared, not an 8 squared. The rest is fine. So right here I should have, whoops, my bad. Right here it should have been a 9. Here it should have been a 9. That was the mistake that I made. Actually, a pretty convincing mistake. I wouldn't be surprised if that mistake was made somewhere else on maybe the test or a quiz that I give out. All right, questions for 11? All right, thank you.